What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we're gonna to be covering some advanced lighting techniques for your 3D printer. We're gonna be using some addressable LEDs to get some fun lighting effects. Anything from useful startup routines to some status LEDs to even some fun party tricks you can show off with. We're gonna be covering some of the hardware considerations, and that's gonna be more generic, not specific just to the Boron 0.1 that I have right here. And then we're gonna be diving into a couple advanced macro techniques in Clipper that will allow you to create really awesome routines for example exactly what you want on your printer. So let's get right into those hardware. The first thing you're gonna need is an LED strip. This is a strip of addressable RGB LEDs, and I'll link this one in the description down below specifically, but there are many options that will work. The next consideration you're gonna need to look at is your printer's control board. Make sure it has an RGB LED plug. That will help you out greatly. This printer uses the SKR Pico control board, and it does list a NeoPixel control pin on there. That makes it really easy to control these LEDs. If your control board is a little older or just doesn't have one of these LED pins on there, you could use a GPIO pin from your Raspberry Pi to control your LED strip. I'll link an article down below that will go into more depth in that route, but we're gonna be using the pin that came on the board. The next thing you wanna consider is where you actually want these LEDs mounted. So these LEDs mounted here are really perfectly mounted. I really like this mount because it points directly into the build volume and doesn't spill elsewhere. Let me show you. This is the highest that the build volume will go and with them being mounted at that level, they're going to shine the light directly onto your first layers going down, and your print head up here won't get in the way of that light. If the LEDs were mounted up above the print head, then as your nozzle is moving over the print, it's gonna block the light, and it will be harder for you to see those first layers going down. These are really great for lighting exactly what you wanna see. Another great feature to this mount, and I didn't design it, I will link the original creator down in the description below, but there are these dividers between the LEDs. That makes it so if you were looking directly at the printer, you can't see directly into those LEDs. They're not as bright on your eye, but it shines the light only where you want it. That's a really nice feature. Only light what you want and don't blind you in the process of doing it. I think this makes an amazing model. And they simply mount into any 15 by 15 aluminum extrusion, which is this entire build. So theoretically, you could put these in a lot of different places around the build, but right here works really well. Now let's get into some of the wiring because it does get a little complex. So here we are at the back of the printer. Yes, I haven't finished all my cable management back here, but it works for now. And I am using this umbilical add-on PCB. It's not stock for the Voron build here, but it does help you a lot with some of the cable management. And it does also have pins for your LEDs. I would say one of some of the wording on the LED pins, the in and out, I think is a little confusing. Where it says in, that means it's the data going to your LED strip. Where it says out, that's the data coming back from your LED strip. I didn't create the board, so I can't complain too much about it because I do like using it. But if I were building this myself, I would have swapped the wording there. But just so it makes sense and you plug it in correctly. And it's only the data pin, so if you got those swapped, the LEDs won't turn on and you can swap them the other way around. Here I'll just show you the schematic of it because I think that will be a little bit easier. There's one plug that goes to your control board and I made a little jumper to go straight to the control board. And then there's three other connectors to go to three different LED strips. And then internally of it, it connects the data pins in serial between them. This allows you to, for individual addressable LED strips and it works really well. And so for LED strip number one, it goes over here behind this motor and around. Luckily, I was able to get all four of the wires. They are four silicone sheathed wires of 22 gauge, and they all fit inside of one of the channels of the aluminum extrusion to fit up above this back panel. And then they're fed into this strip here. The next thing to consider is that last data pin. To be able to communicate with all of your LED pins, you need the end of one strip to feed back into the next strip. So for example, here where I have LED strips on multiple places throughout the printer, all of them need to be connected. So for example, the last LED over on the right here, the data pin I needed to feed back up and above the mount through the aluminum extrusion, and then it goes back to the control board in the back. And then the data can be fed over to this other LED strip all the way down to the end. And the last LED over here as well, the data pin is fed up into the aluminum extrusion above the mount and back to the control board. Now the end of the data pin is here, so if I wanted to add other LEDs anywhere else, I could easily connect them up. It does take a little bit of planning to make sure all of your LEDs are connected in serial connection, but now I can individually control any single LED on this board, which is a really cool feature for some advanced macros we're gonna get into. 
So here we are on my Fluid dashboard controlling this 3D printer. I'm using Fluid right now, but I am working on a video comparing Fluid to Mainsail as your web page dashboard. So if you are interested in that comparison video, hitting that subscribe button down below, make sure you won't miss it. But let's get right into this. First thing to do is go into your configuration, printer config, edit. Then you can go down to our definition of how you define your LEDs. That's this section right here. Up at the beginning, you start with NeoPixel, and then you name it. This was the default for the SKR Pico. It said board underscore RGB. So I just left that naming. Pin down here, GPIO 24. You can find the pin specific to your controller board on your controller board's pinout diagram, something that looks sort of like this. Chain count, that will be how many LEDs you have in series. For me, I have 10. There's four on the left, four on the right, and then I've got two extra ones on the back I was using kind of for testing but they're still wired in series, so it needs to be included in that count. And then color order, that's specific to your LED strip. This one is a GRB, you might have RGB, you might, just different color combinations. If you tell it to go a color and it's incorrect, come back to this, that's how you change it. Initial red, green, and blue colors, it's any value between zero and one, and that should be the color it starts up as. And now I can go into explaining the macro to get this great startup command. Whenever Clipper takes control and goes into a ready state, it runs through this initial startup, which I think is just a really cool dramatic look to it. And it also has the benefit of letting me know when the printer is ready. Sometimes I feel like the Raspberry Pi takes longer than I feel like it should to turn on from when you hit the power switch instead of me waiting at the computer and hitting refresh on the web page, waiting for the printer to turn on. If I turn the printer on, the web page won't be loaded until the LED lights have turned on, so that's a good visual representation of what the printer's doing. And these are the commands I use to get it all running. I split it up into all of these. The first one you need is this delayed underscore G code. That allows you to delay when a certain set of G code will be run. There's a lot of different ways you can use this in different scripts or macros, but right now we're going to be using it in conjunction with an initial duration. Initial duration is time from ready state. So for example, here at initial duration zero, so immediately when it goes into the ready state, send this G code. So this is the specific G code command you send to update LEDs. Set LED is the initial command, then LED equals is you can define which LED strip you wanna control. If your control board has multiple LED strips, or if you're controlling multiple different strips with your Raspberry Pi, for example, you could define it here, but for me, I only have one control pin controlling my LEDs, so I'm all, they're all gonna be set to this equal to board underscore RGB. And then you can control your LEDs, the red, green, and blue part to the color you want, and any value between zero and one. Zero being off, one being all the way on. You can get advanced with your color combinations to create any color exactly how you want it. The next part to this command you'll notice down on these later macros are the transmit. Transmit is whether the signal gets sent to the LEDs now or later. Transmit zero waits until something is told to be sent, and transmit one is yes, send it now. And so you can chain a bunch of these together to update multiple LEDs at the same time. For this macro here, welcome underscore one, so with initial duration 0.5, half a second after the printer goes into the ready state, it sends both of these G codes, and the first one tells LED three, which is over here, to turn all the way on white, but don't send that command yet. And then this next command tells LED seven, which is the mirrored LED over here, to turn all the way on to white and to send. So both of these LEDs should update at basically the same time. And it's the same through the rest of these commands. Each one happens a half second apart, and increments forward. So the first one is at half a second, one second, second and a half, two seconds, and increment LEDs three and seven, four and eight, five and nine, six and 10, all the way forward. But if you had more LEDs you wanted to turn on, or if you wanted a different pattern of things turning on, a different speed you wanted them turned to, a different color you wanted them turned to, there's so much power and customizability in these commands, you can make exactly what works for you. But now that you've got a pretty basic startup routine, let's get into running some fun advanced printer commands. This is an entirely separate macro called party time, and I'm gonna show you some 
parts to it. I did write in this separate it's macros.config because it was a big bulky macro and so I didn't want to clutter up printer.config. In your printer.config file you can put a line like this saying include and then whatever extra file you wanted and then it will just reference that file whenever it needs something from it. And so in macros.config I've got this really big macro written out but let's start breaking it down. It looks big and complex but it's really quite basic. This first line here is really important for allowing you to input a variable into your macros. So it's a basic for loop and the input variable will be count. So when executing this on the terminal, you would type out party time space count equals and then however many times you want it to loop through this. And I set a, def a default at 10 times it will loop through. And now we can go into this for loop. Each of these big blocks of code are just updating all of the colors. All these transmit zero commands don't update it. And then the final transmit one at the bottom of the block tells all the LEDs to update at the same time. So I define some different colors. These first two LEDs will be red. The next two will be blue. The next two will be green. And the last two will be purple. And then it sleeps for 0.25 seconds. Then all of those colors shift forward by one. And it loops these colors waiting 250 milliseconds between updating the color. I like the timing of 250 milliseconds. It's not too fast, not too slow. I also found I like these color combinations, but you could add in as many different color combinations as you want. And then once you get to the bottom of this macro, this line here is the end of the for loop. And so once it's looped through all these code 10 different times, it will exit the for loop. And I have it return all the LEDs on the board back to a basic white color, and then it will exit the macro. And that's really all there is to it. There's only a few basic building blocks you need to be able to build some amazingly intricate and advanced macros for your printer. I'll include this macros.config file in my GitHub and I'll link it in the description down below for just copy pasting some of this code. I know it's really annoying to have to type out all that code so that way you can copy and paste exactly what parts you want for your printer. But that about wraps it up here with some advanced lighting techniques. I hope you've learned something today whether it's the hardware side of things, the software th side of things, or maybe a little bit of all of it. Let me know if you have any more questions in the comments down below or if you have any advanced lighting macros you have set up for your printer. Let me know about them in the description down below. I'd love to hear from you. I love sharing ideas with people on how they've got their printer working perfectly for them. And if you've stuck this far through the video and you've learned something today, hitting that like and subscribe button down below really helps me out and it helps me keep creating useful content like this for the community. But anyway, I hope this has inspired you to go out there and make your printer your own. Make it custom, make it exactly your own. You don't need to build a Voron like this. You can make any printer unique and custom exactly to your needs. And I'll see you in the next one.